I go do 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 one on one facts on Reddit. I go do do do. Let's hope the views are on shit. Way. Good evening, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the front page of the internet, Reddit. Yes, today's topic is one of the world's biggest websites from where many of the world's most well-known memes got their big break. But how did Reddit revolutionize showering? Which Reddit founder may think society is on the brink of collapse? And why did their idea for a successful and highly lucrative website take off, but my plan for a fidget spinner-based dating app keeps on getting shot down by investors? Oh, it's the next best thing, guys, I'm telling you. Two out of three of these questions are going to be answered. So get comfortable, preemptively share this video on Reddit. Go on, do it. Also give this video a like too and follow me on Twitter. And upvote it to oblivion as we count down 101 facts about Reddit. Number one. In case you thought this video was about Pennywise the Clown but in a shade of rouge, it ain't. Reddit is an American social news website where users can share, rate, and discuss various posts and content. Kind of like Facebook, really, for people who hate their friends and family. Number two. Registered users on Reddit can submit content in the form of text posts or direct links to other websites. These submissions are then voted on by other users based on whether it was hashtag very cool or an epic fail. I think that's what the kids talk like anyway. Which determines their position on the page. The most popular posts rise to the top, allowing the best to flourish, and the worst to languish in obscurity like the work of Vincent van Gogh before he killed himself. Hashtag sad. Number three. Posts are organized into categories of interest called subreddits, and they couldn't be more varied and fantastic and strange and frightening. There are subreddits for, off the top of my head, news, movies, music, books, gaming, fitness, food, science, and many, many, many more. Believe me, they get more weird and specific than you could possibly imagine. Number four. Reddit was founded in 2005 by two University of Virginia roommates slash nerds by the names of Steve Huffman and Alexis Ohanian both the Taylor Swift age 22 at the time. Later in the year, American computer programmer and activist Aaron Swartz joined the team, merging Reddit with his company, Infogamy. The team was then joined by Christopher Slow, an academic with a PhD in physics who clearly wanted to do something very, very different than most people who hold a PhD in physics. Number five. Ohanian is a native New Yorker and traces his ancestry back to the Europeans who immigrated to the United States relatively recently. His mother is German, and some members of his family on his father's side came to America while fleeing the Armenian Genocide. Incidentally, Johannian is born on April 24th, which is the day of recognition for the Armenian Genocide. Well, genocide in fact five? Number six. Before becoming a wildly successful startup founder and all-purpose tech superstar, Johannian once worked as a waiter at a Pizza Hut. Just think, the next time you go to a Pizza Hut, you might be served by the next big thing in tech. Number seven. Throughout his career, Ohanian has invested in and advised over 100 startups, including gaming news site Destructoid, the organization app Evernote, and even Patreon. Number 8. Ohanian's success with Reddit and his other ventures landed him a spot on the Forbes 30 under 30 list two years in a row. This list recognizes excellence from young ish people in a variety of categories and receives upwards of 15,000 nominations, meaning if you're on the list, which I'm not but should be, you're probably doing something very right, so well done. Number 9. Ohanian has a black cat called Karma, a reference to the award system one gains from being an active member of the Reddit community by submitting content and posting comments. Karma doesn't grant you any special prizes or extra influence other than the goodwill of other Redditors. Number 10. Oh yes, I also forgot to mention, Ohanian is also married to tennis megastar and literally one of the most accomplished athletes on the face of the planet, Serena Williams. You may have heard of her, maybe? Opposites attract, I guess. Number 11. But enough about Ohanian, what about the Huffster himself, Steve Huffman? What was he up to before making Serious Bank as a tech genius and nerd icon? Well, you may be surprised to learn that Huffman was once a competitive ballroom dancer and used to dance with Angela Kinsey, the actress who plays Angela in The Office US. Number 12. Huffman also wrote calculators in school while he was learning maths. And no, I didn't misspeak there, he didn't just use calculators, he actually wrote code in order to create them himself. That is Peak geek. Number 13. Huffman is also an avid survivalist, i.e. someone who rather enjoys self-sufficiency as a hobby. Either that or seriously believes that the inevitable breakdown of society is imminent and is actively planning for it. In fact, Huffman's survivalist tendencies actually prompted him to get laser eye surgery, as glasses and contact lenses may not be readily available in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, which would leave him, in his words, f***ed. He also claims that he owns a couple of motorbikes, because they're much more mobile than cars, as well as a bunch of guns and ammo. <laughs> okay, don't get on this bad side. Number 14. 
Aside from preparing for the collapse of the social and political order in the United States, Huffman also apparently enjoys frolicking around in the desert with naked hippies, as he is a frequent attendee of the Burning Man Festival. Number 15. Despite being literally one of the most popular websites on the entire internet, Reddit was started on initial funding of only $12,000, which they got from computer scientist and entrepreneur Paul Graham. Huffman and O'Hanian pushed out the earliest versions of the site only three weeks after getting the Benjamins from Graham. Number 16. But when they first approached Graham, the idea was very, very different. Their initial plan was to create a simple way to order food from a local gas station chain using mobile phones. Despite this idea being very ahead of its time, Graham ultimately rejected it, but told them he'd invest in them if they pitched something better, which, I mean, I'm sure we can all agree, they absolutely did. Number 17. Of that $12,000, only a fraction of it ever went on advertising. O'Hanion claims that they only spent $500 on Reddit stickers, which he spread around Boston. And that's all the advertising the site ever got, meaning Reddit owes its meteoric rise to fame almost entirely to word of mouth. Number 18. These days, Reddit employs the assistance of moderators to prevent online shenanigans, particularly by fake accounts that were set up by news organizations or third parties who were aggressively trying to promote their services or products. However, O'Hanion and Huffman have admitted that when Reddit was first launched, they set up numerous fake accounts to submit content to make the site appear more active than it actually was. So, fake it till you make it, guys. Number 19. Despite no doubt being a crucially important figure as Reddit's co-founder, O'Hanion had absolutely nothing to do with coding the site, which he left entirely to Huffman. O'Hanion considered himself a great programmer during high school, but when he met Huffman, he realized he was way out of his league. Number 20. As the more erudite among you will have deduced, the name Reddit is a cunning and imaginative play on the phrase read it, as in I read it. It's a very highbrow literary trick, so don't worry if you're struggling to understand it. Additionally, the spelling was initially going to be read it, as in R-E-D-I-T-T, -T, which is just, ugh, just no, guys. Number 21. Turns out, however, that Reddit wasn't always Reddit at all. A number of other names were suggested before Reddit was locked in, including, but not limited to, Perk Perk, Ripe Fresh, 360 Scope, and Hot Snoo. That last one just sounds like a website from Futurama. Number 22. Ooh. The iconic up and down arrows, which are so integral to the Reddit experience, were almost not arrows at all. In the earliest versions of the site, users would rate content by clicking on the words interesting or boring. Hey, we could try that out as well, I guess, except if you find this video interesting, put super rad. And if you don't, put super rad. What? Well, yeah, why not? Number 23. The first post was made on the 27th of June 2005 by Alexis O'Hanion himself. It linked to a site reporting on UK documents regarding the Iraq War, and visiting it is sort of like going to an internet museum. Number 24. Additionally, the first comment came from a user named Charlie B, who is still active on Reddit after all these years. Bit of a shame that it's essentially a complaint about the site, but hey, that's the internet for you. The comments are always horrible, except for you guys, you're great, and I love you very much. Number 25. Aaron Swartz was fired from Reddit in 2006, after which he turned his attention to activism, pointing out the extreme amounts of misogyny and racism present within the tech community and online in general, as well as speaking out about the importance of internet freedom and net neutrality. Number 26. Swartz was later arrested and charged with a bunch of federal crimes after he systematically downloaded millions of academic journals from JSTOR, presumed with the intent of making them public. Facing the possibility of years in prison, Swartz committed suicide in 2013. He was later posthumously inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame. Number 27. Reddit was acquired by mass media company Condé Nast Publications in 2006, at which point the Reddit team moved to San Francisco. Reddit would later become operationally independent in 2011. Number 28. Only three months after launching the site, an executive at Yahoo invited Huffman and O'Hanion to a meeting to hear about the site. When they explained it roughly had 10,000 users, the executive sneered that Reddit's traffic was a rounding error compared to that of Yahoo, and even had the balls to ask Huffman and O'Hanion, what are you doing here? Because apparently in the 2000s, Yahoo liked to invite small tech companies to their headquarters just to mock them. Number 29. O'Hanion, Huffman, Swartz and Slow were all listed as founders of Reddit in acquisition documents when Condé Nast bought the company, but O'Hanion and Huffman have since disputed that. Today, only O'Hanion and Huffman are credited as the founders of Reddit. Number 30. Huffman and O'Hanion left Reddit in 2009. O'Hanion helped develop the site Bread Pig, which makes geek-orientated t-shirts, posters and fridge magnets, whereas Huffman helped found Hipmunk, an online travel company. Number 31. But plot twist. O'Hanion returned to Reddit in 2012 when Huffman became the website CEO in 2015. Ah, oh, the gang are back together. Sort of. Number 32. 
Riddick's iconic mascot does actually have a name, and that name is Snoo. Snoo is a genderless, raceless robot who was doodled into existence by O'Hanion. Yep, while Huffman was busy stacking up all the ones and zeros and actually building the sites, O'Hanion was scribbling robot doodles. Number 33. Turns out Snoo actually existed before Reddit did. As O'Hanion was sketching away at Snoo months before he and Huffman had fully figured out what the site would be and how it would actually work. Several people tried to talk O'Hanion out of including the happy little robot friend, including Paul Graham himself. But Snoo was allowed to live and what a fine young genderless thing it's turned out to be. Number 34. In fact, O'Hanion has designed logos for every company he's ever started. Something that, according to his website, he does so proudly. Number 50... Th 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 number 35. Reddit actually encourages subreddits to put their own spin on Snoo, and as such, Snoo's appearance often changes depending on what part of the site you're currently perusing. The R Funny Snoo is dressed like a clown, the R Movie Snoo holds a clipboard, and the R Space Snoo is an astronaut. There's even a website with templates and assets for those who want to create their very own Snoo. Number 36. O'Hanion also coined the term Redditor, so apparently he was more integral to the creation of the site than my previous mockery would suggest, for which I heartily apologise. I'm sorry, Alexis. O'Hanion says that he remembers Redditor was his creation because Huffman very explicitly said it was <clears throat> stupid. Wow, harsh. Number 37. Given Reddit's enduring popularity and status as a central online hub for all things internet, the site's slogan is very appropriately the front page of the internet. I mean, I'm sure Google would disagree, but screw Google, this ain't about them. Number 38. As of the year of our law 2017, Reddit has roughly 542 million monthly visitors, making it the fourth most visited website in the US. I guess those Reddit stickers really did pay off. Number 39. So far, the people of Reddit have upvoted content on the site over 16 billion times. And yet, my Jennifer Lawrence poetry receives nothing but downvotes. Gah, it's an unfair world. Number 40. If you're still failing to comprehend the sheer enormity of the internet's front page, get a load of the following statistics. Back in 2005, Reddit received 82 billion page views, 73 million submissions, 725 million comments, and 6 billion upvotes. Number 41. In the same year, the Reddit podcast Upvoted, which tells fascinating stories behind the people who use the site, has amassed over 1.6 million downloads. The meaning of life. As Reddit's popularity has continued to grow over the years, so has the workforce. In 2015, Reddit had roughly 100 employees, but by mid-2017, that number increased to 230. Huffman has stated that he would like 300 full-time staff working at Reddit by the end of the year. Number 43. The Redditor who has accrued the most karma on the site goes by the name of Pepsi underscore next, who has racked up an incredible over 20 million karma points. He achieved this, and I'm assuming it's a he, almost entirely by submitting a metric heck ton of a word that rhymes with prawn. Number 44. The most highly rated post on Reddit says a lot about the site as a whole, and the culture its users endeavour to maintain. Reddit's most highly rated post is a simple gif warning others not to repost content created by others without giving credit. I mean, it has Rocket and Baby Groot in it. Oh. Number 45. As strange as it may sound, commenting wasn't actually a feature on Reddit when the site first launched. This may surprise even the most seasoned Redditor, given how integral discussion is to facilitating the Reddit community. But the ability to post one's thoughts on submission didn't arrive until six months in to the site's existence. Number 46. Additionally, subreddits exist mainly because of all the explicit content that was being shared in the early days of the site. In early 2006, Huffman made a blog post introducing the concept of subreddits, stating that the site would be playing around with new subsections and that they should be fun. <laughs> Say that again. Number 47. But who is the average Redditor? Well, we actually know more about them than you may think. For instance, the median Redditor age is between 25 and 34. They also have some level of college education and, unfortunately, is in the lowest income bracket. Number 48. Like basically everything on the internet, Reddit is also a young man's game. Only 8% of their users are over 50 and only 1% are over 65, making it one of the most youthful social networks. Number 49. Reddit is also a complete sausage fest, and by sausage, you, well, you know what I mean. 84% of Reddit users are men. That means that if Reddit were only 10 people, 8 of them would be men and one would be a woman. And the other would be a woman too, except with massive, big, strong, tattooed man arms. Hope that clears everything up. Number 50. Apparently, the average Redditor spends roughly 16 minutes and 10 seconds on the site per session. The per session specification is very important because... Dot, dot, dot. Number 51. A whopping 88% of Redditors visit the site multiple times per day. 
people are racking up hours and hours of time on Reddit, when they should be doing something far more productive, like, I don't know, watching half an hour fact-based content on the internet. Number 52. According to redditmetrics.com, there are currently about 1.16 million subreddits on Reddit, with the site having hit the symbolic 1 million mark in January 2017. Number 53. The vast majority of Reddit users come from the United States, with 58% of Redditors being as American as Apple Par. The next largest Redditing nation is the United Kingdom at 7%, closely followed by Canada with 6%. Number 54. But even though Canadians could only bag themselves a bronze medal in terms of sheer numbers, America's maple syrup drinking friends up north actually spend more time on Reddit than any other nation. Those snowball fights must get boring quickly. Number 55. While the stereotype of the internet community tend to be, ahem, large groups of pasty white guys, in actual fact, Hispanic people are more likely to be on Reddit than both white or black people. Number 56. The busiest subreddit out there, are funny, gets an average of 600,000 unique visitors and 6.5 million page views every single day. Oh, sorry if I drooled there, that's just the kind of uh, views that I crave. <laughs> Number 57. One of the most popular subreddits is RIMA, which frequently hosts question and answer sessions called Ask Me Anythings, or AMAs for short. All manner of cool people have held these Q&A events, ranging from actors, musicians, big names in tech, and even just normal people with interesting jobs or weird experiences. Number 58. One of the most prominent AMAs was hosted by Barack Obama. Remember that guy? While campaigning in the 2012 presidential campaign. His appearance generated almost 4 million page views, and users submitted over 22,000 questions. In the half an hour he was available, he was able to answer 10 of them. The increased traffic even crashed the site for a short time. Number 59. Other popular AMAs have been held by Game of Thrones actor Peter Dinklage, actress and ex-Scientologist Leah Romini, who dished a whole lot of dirt, and even Bill Gates. Number 60. Other Q&As have been less successful. Given that the format is titled Ask Me Anything, Woody Harrelson was criticised for refusing to answer questions that were unrelated to Rampart, the movie he was promoting at the time, and Bollywood actress Priyanka Chopra was criticised for the same thing. Number 61. Reddit is also the location of a number of interesting social experiments. On April Fool's Day 2015, a subreddit entitled R the Button was launched, which featured a 60 second countdown timer and a button. Users whose accounts were created prior to that date were given a one-time opportunity to push the button or not. If the button was clicked, the global countdown was reset, and the user was awarded a flare, which recorded the time in the countdown where the button was pressed, also assigning them a colour. Number 62. From this, the various categories of flare became status symbols, and satirical religious factions emerged, such as the Red Guard, the Violet Hand, and the Knights of the Button. People who chose not to click the button were often viewed as pretentious and arrogant, and some of them even referred to others using wonderful slurs like filthy pressers. Number 63. In 2017, April Fool's Day was graced by another social experiment based within the subreddit Our Place, which contained a collaborative pixel art canvas. Each user could place a pixel once every five minutes, which encouraged the rise of large groups of people who worked together to produce intricate pixel art depicting symbols, messages, and flags. Our place was open for three days, and produced a stunning work of art that morphed and changed as different teams vied for space. Nintendo 64. Turns out Reddit values brevity above all else. The popularity of an article shared on Reddit is inversely proportional to its length. Therefore, the shorter it is, the more popular it is. Basically the opposite in real life, I'm told. Number 65. The users of Reddit have also shown themselves to be incredibly charitable when called upon. When a man was seriously injured in Kenya while trying to prevent intruders from entering an orphanage, I mean, he literally took a machete to the face, Reddit of the Lake asked for donations, hoping to raise $2,000 to pay for a concrete wall topped with barbed wire to keep further douchebags out. Reddit raised $100,000. Number 66. Reddit is also home to the world's largest secret Santa gift exchange, which was recognised by the old Guinness World Record in 2012 with a staggering 44,805 people taking part. In 2013, Reddit absolutely smashed that record, with 89,421 people taking part from 160 different countries, almost doubling the efforts of the previous year. Number 67. Reddit Secret Santa counts a number of celebrities among its participants, such as Stephen Colbert and Bill Gates. Snoop Doggy Dog is arguably the best gift giver, having once given a user named Erin a mountain of gifts, as well as a handwritten card wishing her a Merry Ex-Mizzle, which is gangster for Christmas. Number 68. 
In order to figure out how to craft the perfect Reddit post, PhD student Randy Olson studied 850,000 of the top Reddit posts from 4,200 of the most active subreddits. He managed to figure out the best time to post, how to form an optimally upvotable title, and what kind of content elicits the best response from other users. He found the best time to post was around 7 to 8 a.m., when America is waking up and checking Reddit, and that the most popular photo posts are overwhelmingly posted on imga.com. Number 69. Ooh. Reddit also inspired a revolutionary advance in personal hygiene, curiously known as shower beers, which is about as literal a name as you can get. A beer enjoyed while taking a nice relaxing shower. In fact, there's an entire subreddit dedicated to the concept, in which users share candid photos of themselves enjoying an alcoholic beverage while under a hot stream of water. And as you can imagine, those photos are frequently a little NSFW. The practice has become so popular that there are now even beers made specifically to be enjoyed in the shower. Number 70. A somewhat related concept is that of shower thoughts, which are the mind-expanding philosophical epiphanies that frequently bubble forth when one's mind goes blank in the shower. Some of my favourites include this one, this one, this one, and this one. Number 71. Reddit is also the home of a far less thoughtful concept in the form of the Reddit 50-50 challenge. A simple premise, but sometimes devastating results. Users submit a link which is labelled with two possibilities, one good and the other, well, not so good and not so safe for life. The link contains only one such possibility, and believe me, some of the bad ones are truly horrendous. Try some if you dare. Number 72. There's even a way for Redditors to use their extremely specific interest to meet that someone special who will tolerate their extremely specific interest. Redmeet <laughs> is a website that matches users based on their interest in similar subreddits. So if you're looking for someone who appreciates a good squat or a truly superb owl, love may be just around the virtual corner. Number 73. Conversely, if you're less interested in meeting the one, and for some reason are more excited by the possibility of having complete strangers say extremely hurtful things to you, head over to our roast mate, where users submit photos of themselves to be brutally insulted for yucks, and be warned though, they do not play nice. Number 74. Redditors have even developed their own for funsy stock exchange in the form of our meme economy, where users can speculate on the dankness of their new memes, which can be bought or sold based on their perceived likelihood of going mainstream, i.e. getting shared on Facebook by your parents months after the rest of the internet has seen it. The Reddit even has a trade-style magazine called Meme Insider. Number 75. A standard Reddit account is free, but for those of you who enjoy the finer things in life, there is Reddit Gold, the site's premium membership option. Users who pay the monthly $3.99 fee are treated to additional features like ad blocking and custom themes. It's also become tradition in the Reddit community to tip others with gold membership as a show of respect for particularly interesting or funny comments or submissions. If you post this on Reddit, I'm sure you're gonna get one. Maybe. Not that I'm bribing you. Number 76. When I say that many subreddits are extremely specific, I mean it. Reddit is known for the sheer number of pages dedicated to bizarre topics, and are usually titled very literally. Some of the weirdest subreddits that I can actually talk about include r birds with arms, a page full of images with birds with human arms, r slabs underscore squatting, which contains photos of people of Slavic descent in squatting positions, r g g g g, a page dedicated entirely to the letter g, and r toaster rights, a page for those who sympathise with the plight of toasters and fight for the rights of which they've been so unjustly deprived. Number 77. There's also a subreddit for people who think trees suck. Yes, people who hate trees and do all they can to call them out in their obnoxious, arboreal ways can find a home at our trees sucking at things. I don't know if this is a good idea, guys. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the happening, but they can get revenge pretty easily. Number 78. Wonderfully, there's even a subreddit for people explaining their evil plans. Whether you intend to get revenge on someone who needs taking down a peg or two, or simply enjoy inflicting chaos and mayhem on those you love, Head on over to R My Evil Plan if you need help fleshing out your diabolical schemes. <laughs> they probably do tutorials on how to laugh too. Number 79. Zombies have been a staple in the horror genre for decades, but they appear to be having a particular spike in popularity of late with the rise of TV shows like The Walking Dead and games like The Last of Us. Indeed, it would appear that a significant amount of people regard a large-scale zombie outbreak as theoretically possible, or at least more so than death from other monsters like vampires or werewolves. The denizens of our zombie survival tactics clearly think so, having created a subreddit where people go to very earnestly plan and prepare for the zombie apocalypse, sharing various tips and strategies for survival against the undead horde. Number 80. Hilariously, there's also a subreddit which features nothing but photos of plug sockets and light switches in bizarre places, such as ceilings, walls, tree stumps, or lampposts. Number 81. Having taken a brief tour through the world of weird subreddits, you may be relieved to hear about the sporty goings-on in our Super Bowl. Except it's not Super Bowl, it's Superb Owl. 
Yes, a subreddit dedicated to the most superb owls imaginable, either as a way to troll Super Bowl fans or simply enjoy Strigger forms in all their glory. Number 82. Some subreddits, however, have been controversial, including several notorious examples which promoted virulently racist and sexist beliefs. Reddit eventually began to remove many of these groups, which prompted the creation of various other Reddit-esque sites, which claim to value freedom of expression more so than Reddit, as if banning subreddits to promote violence against ethnic minorities is somehow a violation of free speech, which it isn't. Such sites include Vote, which is on the verge of shutting down due to a lack of funding. Number 83. Some Redditors have also caused significant harm by encouraging vigilante justice. In 2013, one even incorrectly identified innocent people as the perpetrators of the Boston bombing. This ultimately led to a lawsuit as well as a public apology from Reddit officials. Number 84. From truly humble beginnings, Reddit has survived hardship, scorn, and being compared to a rounding error to grow into an enormous online community. As of July 2017, Reddit is now valued at roughly $1.8 billion. Number 85. When Nepal was devastated by a powerful earthquake in 2015, which killed almost 9,000 people, Reddit utilized its community spirit and raised $250,000 for victims and survivors. Number 86. When Greenpeace began a campaign to raise awareness about Japan's controversial whale hunting to discourage the practice, they created an online poll to help name the whales that they were tracking. Several serious, thoughtful, and some may say pretentious names were suggested, such as Anahi, the Farsi word for immortal, and Kai Mana, which supposedly means divine power of the ocean in a Polynesian language. But one in particular caught the attention of Reddit, Mr. Splashy Pants. After a viral campaign swept across the internet, Mr. Splashy Pants won with 78% of the vote. The second place name got only 3%. Number 87. When Reddit found a photograph of a CERN scientist who strongly resembled Gordon Freeman, a character from the popular video game Half-Life, the denizens of the site decided to send him a crowbar, Freeman's signature weapon. Amazingly, the crowbar actually made it to the lookalike scientist, who promptly took a number of photos of himself, wielding it against other scientists. Oh god, I hope he didn't actually use it. Number 88. Ohanian's username on the site, K Nothing, is an abbreviation of King Nothing, a song by Metallica, which was his favourite in high school, and originally a gamer tag. Huffman's username is Spez, which isn't a song, but sounds like a vicious insult. Number 89. Huffman was forced to apologise after confessing to modifying text posts of a number of Trump supporters who had been sending him abusive comments. This occurred after Reddit shut down a subreddit entitled R Pizzagate, which promoted the entirely unsubstantiated conspiracy theory that members of the Democratic Party were connected to a very illegal ring being run out of a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. Number 90. In 2011, Reddit became aware of a subreddit by the name of Oh god. RA858DE45F56D9BC9. That's snappy. In which someone was dumping large amounts of code which no one could understand. Eventually, someone decoded one of the posts, which revealed an ASCII drawing of Stonehenge. People are still trying to make sense of the page, with some even speculating that it may be the word of extraterrestrials. Ooh. Number 91. Reddit can also be a useful problem solver by functioning as a enormous hive mind. When a redditor named Meatheaded was involved in a hit and run, they posted a photo of a piece of broken taillight that the guilty party left behind, asking if anyone knew the car it came from. Reddit eventually determined that the fragment came from a grey 1991 Cadillac Brougham, information which Meatheaded took straight to the police. The information Reddit provided them allowed the authorities to match the suspect to a stolen vehicle, adding theft to his rap sheet. Number 92. In 2015, Reddit also came to the rescue of a user, Frankly My Dear, who was losing his mind searching for the name of a song used in an advert for the Seat Toka. They even wrote to Seat about the music, who claimed that the track was an original commission and not a full song, leaving Frankly My Dear heartbroken. This turned out to be a complete lie, because almost an entire year later, a user by the name of The Viking Howard messaged Frankly My Dear out to the blue, informing them that the track was called Turn the Lights Down by an artist called Biso. When Frankly My Dear effusively thanked The Viking Howard for ending months of torment and sadness, The Viking Howard responded with the now iconic phrase, Shh, baby is okay, which quickly became a viral hit. Number 93. Another quirk in the culture of Reddit involves ratifying every rules page with an image of a brick. This is a symbolic gesture that implies the rules being laid down have been chiseled undeniably into brick, and are therefore taken very seriously indeed. Number 94. Reddit also has a series of rules and guidelines known as Redicate, which are created by users themselves, and is available in several languages. Users are expected to use proper grammar and spelling, give an explanation when downvoting something, and avoid asking for upvotes for their submissions rather than letting the content speak for itself. Number 95. 
Another of Reddit's most prominent axioms states that it's perfectly fine to be a Redditor with a website, it's not okay to be a website with a Reddit account. Basically, don't spam people with links about your homemade jewellery shop on Etsy, Brenda. Very specific example, sure, but Brenda, it's annoying. Number 96. The date upon which a Redditor creates their account is known as one's cake day, and is celebrated annually like an online birthday. During a user's cake day, a teeny tiny slice of cake appears next to their name for 24 hours. Tasty. Number 97. In 2014, Reddit was forced to ban a subreddit for the name of R Sony GOP because it was being used to distribute files belonging to Sony that had been obtained illegally through hacking. Number 98. The aforementioned SNOOPDOG, as well as other celebrities like Jared Leto, are actually investors in the site itself. Man, I hope Jared Leto didn't go on it after being the Joker. Ho <laughs> it wasn't pleasant. Number 99. In November of 2009, Reddit got rid of the last of its physical servers and moved everything onto Amazon Web Services. So, without Amazon, Reddit wouldn't exist right now. Number 100. Unlike a lot of other sites, users are not required to provide an email when signing up to the site. They only need to pick a username and a password. Number 101! Reddit has also shown its willingness to help individual people in need with a truly thoughtful pick-me-up that everyone can appreciate. This is a subreddit called Random Act of Pizza, in which users will buy pizza for those in need. Aww, in a way, Reddit's just like life. It's something full of complete weirdness, sure, but it can also do good, and I think that's an inspiring message to take home from 101 Facts today. In even more inspirational messages, why not like this video down below and put some comments there too, and watch these ones that are on screen now, you're gonna love them. Share them on Reddit if you want, but uh, just don't be like Brenda, basically. Don't spam, it's bad. Anyway, bye!